I think uh, I read the other day someone described where we are in the industry as the, uh, the end of the beginning uh, of virtual reality. I think we've seen uh, an awful lot of experimentation around the types of, of hardware that are going to get in consumers' hands, and, and we're just now starting to see what actually might look like consumer hardware uh, uh, coming out this year with the announcement from Google. So I think what you're starting to see is, is that next wave of VR, and, and uh, fortunately for companies like ours, and unfortunately for a lot of other people, we think fragmentation is gonna actually going to increase over the next couple of years rather than consolidation start. So we really are at the end of the beginning. We've got to be into a real adoption curve, and there were lots of projections at the outset of this year about how fast the consumer market was going to grow with the respective adoption of VR headsets. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Yeah, I think we're, you know, it's interesting. I think the sentiment in the market is that adoption has been at a lower rate than people expected, but we, we actually think uh, sort of the, the converse of that. Um, if you look at the, the hardware that's available in the market today, uh, from the very high-end uh, PC-based headsets to the mid-range mobile-based headsets to the, the console-based uh, headsets like PlayStation VR, um, there's maybe only 100 or 150 million people in the entire world who are really the target consumers of those devices. If you have the right type of computer, if you have the right type of phone, if you have the right type of console, so actually the total addressable market for current generation hardware is, is really small. And when you look at a total adoption that might be 10 or 15 million headsets against that in the last 18 months, that's not a bad penetration rate in the first year of a, of a new product. What we're seeing though is that we're going to shift from those three buckets of high-end PC and mobile and console uh, to something that's more of a standalone device. And you saw an announcement from Google at, at I.O. on Wednesday uh, that they're working with HTC and Lenovo to bring those standalone devices to market this year. And what that really means is that if you don't happen to have the right PC or the right phone or the right console, you can still buy this standalone device. And so basically if you're an iPhone user uh, who's not a gamer, you couldn't use virtual reality before and in the future you will be able to. Eric, how do you think about expanding that 150 million people that's the current addressable market? Is it a price point issue to drive a more aggressive adoption and expand the market? You know, price is often given as the reason that the market, uh, uh, it, that it needs to drop for the market to expand. Um, I actually personally think, and I think our data shows that that's a, a little bit of a red herring. Um, you have an awful lot of people who are excited about virtual reality technologies who frankly just can't get it integrated into their life because it's too hard. Um, you know, it's uh, a mean no disparagement against people with big gaming desktop PCs, but they're, they're not the easiest thing to use. And so if you think about integrating that into your daily life and how it would need to sit in your house and the space it takes up and just how you need to, to keep it operating, it's a big challenge for a consumer that might have a you know, MacBook Air and an iPhone as their primary devices. And so the, the hardware actually needs to get a lot easier to use, not necessarily just a lot less expensive. And with this, the advent of these standalone devices, I think you're going to start to see hardware that is just as easy as pull it out of the box, press the button, turn it on, and, and put it on your head, and it works. Whereas before, right now, you're looking at devices that literally take hours of setup. And that's just too much for general consumers to deal with. Definitely, you need to get that adoption up, but then also you need to be thinking about creating a lot of content to actually have consumers enjoy the experience and embrace the experience. How does Altspace VR tackle this? Yeah, and so that's been our approach from the start, is that not only do you need to connect people in these shared spaces, but they need to have something to do. And so what we've, we've done is we've created a, a platform that allows people to create these live events and experiences in Altspace, as well as the technology to bring the web into virtual reality to create content. So we like to uh, uh, not spend a lot of our time and money on content creation, but instead on creating the tools for other people to create that content. So, you know, just for example, yesterday there was a, uh, an event where uh, the new movie Alien is coming out, and so one of the, the uh, folks who was involved in the movie came into Altspace and had a crowd of 500 people there to do a Q&A and talk right. about the movie and talk about the, the materials.